In this video, I am going to discuss about how to uh, apply the wind parameters for wind analysis. So here, let me show you the building dimensions first. So I have assumed uh, length as 20 meters. You can see that each base divided into 4, 4 meters. And in y direction, it is 16 meters. And the total height is approximately 41. Okay, you can just go for add or modify grids. And uh, I'm just showing the height of the building that is 41.6 here, total height of the structure. So click on OK. So you can prepare your own structure. Just have prepared the skeleton which we have seen in the previous videos. And after uh, preparing the skeleton of the structure, I'm just going for define and click on load patterns like we did the like we did for the seismic loads. So just define the load name here. I'm going for Windex. Okay. You can define any name as per your convenience. I'm defining Windex and the type of load is wind load. And we need to select the code here as IS1, uh, IS875 here and click on add new load. Similarly, I want to define the load in Y direction also. So just you can rename it as wind Y and click on add new load. So we need to modify the parameters here. We need to give the basic wind speed and other coefficient values here. And we are going for exposure from extents of diaphragm. So we need to create the diaphragms here for the wind. I mean like for wind analysis of the structure. Either you can create the diaphragm and come here or else you can just give the parameters and later on you can create the diaphragm. Anything is okay. So here under wind exposure parameters, if you are clicking on this, since already the diaphragm has been created for the seismic load, uh, we are going to get the parameters like this. Okay. So let me define the basic wind coefficients and the wind parameters here. The basic wind speed I'm going to consider is something around 33. Already we knew that we can give the values from 33 to 55. Okay. So you can just check it here. Already we have discussed about this. That is, uh, there are four, sorry, there are six values for the basic wind speed. That is 33, 39, 44, 47, 50 and 55. Okay. So from all these six values as per IS code, you need to select the basic wind speed according to the location. I mean, according to the zone of the structure. So I'm just going to consider it as 33 for example or you can just select the uh, city for which the structure has been located and from there you can just choose the basic wind speed here. Okay. Now I'm going to consider 33 as basic wind speed. So I'm just going to give the value as 33. So just give the value as 33 for example and there are four categories. I mean terrain categories here. So those are nothing but I mean, we need to give the K2 value, right? So for that, uh, it depends upon the category, uh, four categories. I mean, like there are four categories. Category one refers to the no obstructions and category two is for open terrain and three refers to the area of closed spaced building and category four is for area with highly closed buildings. Okay. So if your structure is surrounded by various other buildings by uh, nearby itself, then you can go for category 4. Okay. If there are, I mean, like, uh, if you are having some spaces between the structures, like refers to areas of close, closed spaced buildings, then you can go for category 3. So you have to be clear with the category and then we need to go for the classes, like class A, class B and class C. So because when we are referring to the K2 table, I mean, K2 factor table that is in the table 2 in IS 875 code, so here we are having four categories and again those are uh, further classified into three classes. Okay. So if our structure is coming under category three and we need to choose the class, this class depends upon the dimensions of the building. As I said, our building is of uh, 20 by 16 length and width and height is 41.6. Uh, 41 so depending upon the dimensions, we can decide that it comes under class B. Class B. Okay, so we need to go for the height as 41. So you either you can interpolate or you can just take the rough value for practice purpose. But while doing the practical thing, you need to interpolate the value here. I'm just going to consider the cat, uh, terrain category 3 and our structure comes under class B. So I'm just going to consider 1.06. Okay, so you can see that here we are having 30 height and 50 height. In between them, our structure height is there, that is 41.6. So for 30, it is 1.03 and for 50, it is 1.06. So 
zero nine. I am just going to consider one point zero six four forty one point six height. Okay. So we need to specify that value here. I mean, like just we need to take that uh, terrain category. That is third category. So for manual calculation, you have to choose from the table. Okay. So here, since it is a program calculator, automatically E tabs will cal uh, choose all those parameters depending upon the coefficients given here. An importance factor depending upon the structure type, you need to select whether it is a residential or a complex like a public uh, structure like that. So let it be one. And the risk coefficient again, we need to go for the code here. So the risk coefficient, I mean the type of building and its design uh, period. Okay, so design life it depends upon the design life and K one depends upon that. For example, let us consider that uh, buildings and structure present in the low degree of hazard to life and property in the event of failure, such as isolated towers in wooded areas, farm buildings other than residential buildings. Okay. So, if it is other than residential buildings, we can go for this one. Okay, if it is a hospital or educational community like that, then we can go for this one. Okay, otherwise, just choose the uh, design life, and as per that, depending upon the wind speed, whatever the basic wind speed we have chosen, we need to select the K one factor there. Okay, so for example, uh, here coming to this, it is asking for K one factor. Let us choose the K one factor as. Uh, for example our structure design life is 100 years okay and since we have chosen 33 meter per second as the basic wind speed uh, i am going to consider 1.05 as the k1 factor okay Co risk coefficient so that uh, let us change for 1.05 as per the code okay and the next topography factor depends upon the slope actually so let us see that one also once again Yeah, here we are having the topography factor, okay, and it depends upon the hill region, cliffs and ridges, okay. So here, uh, if it is up ground, I mean upward ground slope, then we are going to consider it as, I mean, uh, then we are going to consider the value as one here, okay. If it is less than three degrees, or else it is between zero or three degrees, and if it is greater than three degrees, it lies between one and one point three six, okay. So our assumption is. The slope is less than three degrees, and the K three value will be one here. Okay, so just let us not change this value, and the exposure height from uh, which level you want to expose your structure for the wind loads. Either you can choose from the bottom story since we have chosen that uh, the structure is surrounded by other buildings also. So we can change the bottom story here. Okay, so or else you can just go for base also, or else I'm just going for story one. And if there is an include, uh, if you want to include the parapet wall also, then you can go for include parapet. And whatever the height of parapet height, I mean parapet wall you want to give, you can just define it here. And whatever the wind load coming on the parapet wall, that will be act, I mean that will be acting on the slab or the roof of the structure, and uh, it will be converted into a cantilever effect. Okay, so I'm not in, I'm not going to include this parapet here. And we have to give the windward coefficient and leeward coefficient. These are as per the code by default values. So you can just check with the code depending upon the structure type, and you can give the windward and leeward coefficient. So windward is the direct force of the wind, and leeward is something like, uh, say for example, the wind load is coming like this, and it is affecting the other side indirectly. Then that comes under leeward coefficient. Okay. And next, coming to wind direction exposure width, so you need to click on modify or show. So for x direction, just keep it as zero degrees. Okay. And since we have provided the diaphragm, whatever the width and depth and its coordinates are there, that will be represented here. Okay. And just click on OK and click on OK. Similar way, we need to edit for y also. So whatever the factors we have considered for x direction, that is thirty three. Terrain category is three, importance factor is one, and risk coefficient is one point zero five. And we have considered the exposure height from the story one to thirteen. So just I'm going to define that here. Okay. And now I'm just going for y direction. Click on modify lateral load. So basic wind speed is thirty three, and the terrain category is three. Importance factor is one, and the risk coefficient is one point zero five. And we got the topography factor. I mean, we have assumed the topography factor as one. Okay, and we have considered the bottom story as story one here. Okay, 
and just go for the wind direction and exposure width so just click on that and you are going to get this i mean we need to change the direction angle as 90 here for y direction so click on ok and click on ok so again click on ok to close this window and in order to assign the windows for our structure uh, the building has to be provided with the wall i mean like cladding for the structure so in order to provide that what i'm going to do is just select the uh, total structure and you can go for assign sorry uh, we can just go for define so we need to go for draw okay and click on auto draw cladding not for define we need to go for draw click on auto draw cladding okay and uh, you can either connect by using the floors or by beams or use columns so i'm just going to use the floors click on ok and we can observe that the building has been uh, created by i mean it has been uh, surrounded by automatic wall cladding then okay and i want to define the wind loads say for example i want to define in x direction so you, you need to select the walls in this direction okay so i'm just going to select all the walls in this direction slowly so just hold i mean like you can select multiple objects here so in this view it will be difficult to select all the wall i mean all the wall cladding here so simply you can go for the elevation view and you can just select them and assign the wind load so in if i want to assign the windward load here so what i'm going to do is just go for the a elevation view that is you can set the elevation view for the a line and click on apply click on ok and just i'm going to select all the wall cladding here okay so i have selected all the wall cladding here and then you can go for assign okay and you can go for shell loads and click on wind pressure coefficient and just select the wind x direction and whatever the windward coefficient we have provided that is 0.8 okay if you want to go for windward just click on windward and click on apply okay so click on ok to close this window and you can go for 3d view and we can observe that the wind load has been assigned here okay similarly i want to assign the uh, wind load in y direction also for our structure again we need to go for the first line elevation click on elevation here and set it for one click on apply and okay similarly we need to select all the cladding and apply the wind load so i'm just going to select all the cladding here so I have selected all the wall cladding in y direction with respect to y direction and again go for assign and just go for the shell loads and click on wind pressure coefficients and select the uh, wind y and just go for the coefficient again click on apply and click on ok. So after creating this we, I mean after assigning the loads we need to define the combinations so click on load combinations ok. So you can click on add default design combinations and select the concrete frame design and click on OK. And whatever the load patterns we have given there, according to that we are going to get the load combinations like this. Okay. Click on OK. And then we need to check for any errors or warnings. So you can click on analyze menu, check for uh, check for model and you can just select or I mean select all option here and click on OK and the checking is being done there you can just cross check at bottom left of the screen and model has been checked no warnings messages were generated now we can run the analysis you can click on this or just you can go for analyze menu and click on done analysis here and the analysis being run here and after analysis simply we are going to cho choose the deformed shape and just we are going to examine the structure what are the reactions we got okay and how the structure behaves how, uh, what is the SFD BMD we will be getting for different beams and other columns okay what are the stresses developed there yeah so let me keep the uh, just i'm going to activate this 3d view actually the analysis is done here and i'm just going to show you the deformed shape so just click on that and click on apply and we can see the deformed shape here okay so you can click on start animation uh, or else let me keep the 3d view yeah so we got the deformed shape here and you want to uh, see the deformation animation for x and y direction so let me show you how to do that 
so just i'm going to activate this view also and just going for the elevation view and let us go for the first line click on one click on apply and click on ok and similar way just go for this view click on elevation and this is from uh, this is for x direction so click on apply click on ok now you can just click on this view and go for deformed shape and select for which case you want to see the deformed animation i mean deformed uh, structure animation so i want to go for wind x click on apply click on ok and click on start animation here okay so this is for wind x direction you can just see the axis here i think i have kept the same yeah and this is for y direction so just i am going to select this view again go for the deform shape and you can go for the case here and you can choose the wind y and click on apply click on ok so you can go for start animation so this is for x direction and this is for y direction you can see the difference between the number of bays there okay so in x direction we have given 20 total length and in y direction it is 16 and depending upon whatever the wind loads we have assigned there and depending upon the displacements we got so this is the displacement animation for our structure for the given wind parameters here okay and if you want to see the base reactions which we got for the total analysis you can simply go for control t and you can click on analysis here okay and you can go for the results you can just go for base reactions whatever the reactions we got and click on ok and the table will be generated here so just you can expand it like this so we will be getting i mean like for windex we got uh, 569 and for win y we got 711 as the total reaction in x and y direction so in this way we can just analyze the structure for the given wind parameters and you can just follow up with the general designing process which we have seen in the earlier videos in this